Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today we've got some interesting weather to be talking about around Australia. We're going to start things off talking about an east coast low that is possible to form off New South Wales and Queensland. Regardless of the formation chances, some heavy rainfall is expected around New South Wales and Queensland, even into central Queensland as well. And then we're going to be talking about some powerful cold fronts that are expected to blast the southwest corner of Western Australia, starting from this morning uh, with a major one coming through this weekend to ruin the WA Day celebrations down there. We're going to also take a look at some general weather around South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, just so that they don't miss out as well. And a lot more coming up in today's forecast in regards to tropical cyclones as well. So if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. We're very close to 15,000 subscribers and I would love to have your company on board. But let's get things st uh, st started straight away. We're going to move over to New South Wales and Queensland. It is a quiet picture there today and it's going to be a quiet picture there for the rest of the week. Just a bit of cloud moving through the northern parts of Queensland, but that's not equating to much rainfall with some showers here and there, but nothing significant. A couple of showers just outside of Brisbane, but we're not talking about today. We're going to be talking about this forecast in a couple of days. You can see this major cold front that's actually impacting the Perth area right now. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it is raining at this time as a result of this cold front. But this cold front here is going to be moving across South Australia, the Northern Territory, and then into Queensland and New South Wales on Friday. First off, it's going to be providing much needed rainfall to South Australia, the Northern Territory um, and eastern, uh, western parts of Queensland and New South Wales. So it is a bunch of good news, that's for sure. And then towards the end of the week, Friday evening into Saturday morning, it's sort of going to split off into two with a bit of a line of thunderstorms up around Queensland and the Northern Territory and a few showers as well. Um, around New South Wales. But this is where things get really interesting because you can see that this is going to start to round off into a low pressure area somewhere between this frontal band here, which is just uh, towards the east of Lord Howe Island, or the west rather of Lord Howe Island, and this frontal band here, which is currently over Newcastle per se. Now this is going to rotate itself up into a low pressure area. Uh, that's just what troughs do on this part of Australia. This is exactly how East Coast lows form, most commonly from moisture bands that move through New South Wales and Queensland. So this is textbook East coast low formation right here and you can see showers and storms start to wrap themselves up um, into a tight low pressure system this weekend Saturday and Sunday the 1st and 2nd of June respectively just offshore from that southern part of Queensland very heavy showers and thunderstorms as well we're likely going to be seeing some decent rainfall accumulations up to 50 or 60 millimeters or so um, in the southeastern quadrant of uh, Queensland and also into the northeastern parts of New South Wales, some good rainfall is possible there. And then as the system intensifies and the weekend draws to a close by Monday, we're expecting this low pressure area to slide down in the East Australian current towards Tasmania and Victoria. And uh, looks like it's going to provide some pretty heavy showers and storms to parts of Tasmania as well before it weakens off. Now, this is an interesting forecast because it's not actually going to be an awful lot of rainfall on the New South Wales coastline. If we were to take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next 10 days from an East Coast low of this magnitude, because it, it certainly is going to be a strong one, we'll get onto winds and waves in just a second, you'd be looking at rainfall accumulations above 150 or 200 millimetres, very widespread across a lot of locations, but the wettest locations between Sydney and Newcastle on the coast barely pick up about 100 millimetres, not going to get me wrong, that is still quite a wet weekend, especially if it all falls in about 12 hours on Sunday, which is looking quite possible at this time, but compared to previous East Coast lows and previous weather events, that really is just a drop in the ocean. Ocean. That is because the majority of the rainfall gets itself out to sea and uh, falls over there, 230, 240 millimetres. That's much more typical rainfall accumulations from an east coast low. However, well, like I said, very minimal threat to land at this time. Um, and also quite a lot of rainfall expected to get itself down here in Victoria. In some of the mountainous areas just outside of Bairnsdale and Omeo, we're looking at up to about 120 millimetres through there, which is some good rainfall, that's for sure. And Malakuta on the New South Wales, Queens, uh, Victoria border rather, also expecting a healthy 100 millimetres or so. Um, around Coles Bay as well on Tasmania, expecting about 90 or 100 millimetres through there between Burnie and St Helens, some good rainfall also possible. Um, that could result in a little bit of minor or moderate flooding, but certainly this weekend we've got to be watching the radar and the forecast very closely because it does look like there will be the chance of some minor flooding or some flash flooding in some locations especially in Tasmania and also around Mallacoota and Burnsdale in Victoria there is a possibility of some flash flooding there and also in the urban areas around Sydney and Newcastle very built up areas there's always that risk of flash flooding as well especially considering the rainfall accumulations will also be quite high and the other big factor that we talk about with east coast lows is wind speeds and this is 
system is certainly going to be, uh, have some strong wind gusts, that's for sure. Uh, what it's going to lack in rainfall for areas around the New South Wales coastline, especially between Mallacoota and Sydney, which are only expecting about 30 or 40 millimetres this weekend, it is going to make up for in wind speeds, with peak wind gusts up to 90 kilometres an hour expected to develop Sunday evening. And then as you get down towards Tasmania, we're going to be talking about wind gusts approaching the Bass Strait of closer to 100 kilometres an hour. Very, very strong winds indeed. Lord Howe Island also expecting wind gusts up towards 70 or 80 kilometres an hour and likely a little bit stronger than that as well, especially as Monday draws in before this system weakens off through the first uh, couple of days of the next working week. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, it starts to weaken off dramatically, but it doesn't look like it's a bad forecast in terms of rainfall. It just looks pretty nasty in terms of winds. And also as a result of that wave heights, we're expecting peak wave heights along the coast of at least four, maybe 4.5 metres around the Sydney or Newcastle sort of area. Uh, but out to sea, you're going to be talking about massive wave heights up towards that six or seven metre mark just outside of Lord Howe Island. And then as you get further south towards Tasmania, up towards five metres there. And the only thing that really stops these massive waves from um, getting towards the Tasmanian coastline is by Monday, the cold front that's going to be slamming the West Australian coastline looks like it sweeps through or sweeps right down and south and kind of just put, uh, sucks this um, ball of moisture, this uh, the remnants of the East Coast low down south towards Macquarie Island and so forth. But again, more on that forecast in it just a little bit. But right now, especially over the next 10 days for Eastern Australia, a good amount of rainfall on the cards, up to 150 millimetres in both Victoria, New South Wales, and 100 millimetres in in Tasmania and Queensland here and there, and also some good rainfall expected through South Australia and central parts of Queensland, 25 to 30 millimetres in those locations. Um, far north Queensland, like I have been saying, are drying off significantly now. But just one last thing that I would like to talk about, more of a tropical forecast, is the GFS still calling for much later in that forecast period, that east coast trough to extend between Cairns right down towards Bundaberg and Fraser Island, and that will deliver some heavy rainfall next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday to parts of far north Queensland and central Queensland just outside of Mackay we're looking at up to 130 millimetres through there Mackay itself looking at about 80 and even up towards Cairns 50, Townsville about 50 as well so this is interesting to be having on the forecast and what is kind of interesting as well is the fact that A this is very unusual for the uh, for this time of the year but the Eastern Rift is also semi on board with something similar to that I mean take a look at this this is um, sort of the same weather system a bit of a trough developing offshore from the Queensland coastline, but of course it is much weaker and much further offshore. And the Axis G3 also calling for the exact same thing to be on the forecast. It's just the GFS is calling for it to be much stronger than those other forecast models combined, basically. Um, so whether it does happen uh, or not, it seems relatively likely at this stage, maybe 50 or 60% chance. But if it happens like the GFS is saying, and we get a lot of rainfall coming ashore in early June in the tropical parts of Queensland, I don't think so. I think that is a relatively low chance at this time. But yeah, that basically does it for the eastern parts of Australia. If I've missed anything, I'm happy to answer your question in the comment section down below, so leave it there. We're going to now shift focus over to Western Australia because we've got some big things coming in on the forecast. I mean, right now, we've already got some rain moving through the Perth metro area at this time, a couple of showers here and there. Some of them are actually quite heavy as well. Um, we've also got some... Uh, big showers and big cloud activity just offshore here with some thunderstorms in them too. So uh, make sure you are staying safe, especially this evening on their commute home. It looks like it is going to be quite a wild night around the Perth metro area. So make sure you are staying safe on those roads and staying safe outside because those winds are going to dramatically pick up later on this afternoon where you could be seeing wind gusts up towards 60, 70, maybe even up towards 80 kilometers an hour and some showers and uh, thunderstorms as well. And this will really pick up into tonight and into early tomorrow morning. And they should hopefully ease off by lunchtime tomorrow. Now I've been saying for the last couple of days that considering the amount of rainfall that's gonna be coming through and also the cold conditions that we're gonna be seeing this afternoon and evening down towards um, the southern parts of the state and the south coastal region, especially early tomorrow morning where temperatures will likely be averaging about six or seven degrees and in the more elevated areas that will be a little bit colder than that at about four or five degrees there is the very very slim chance of snow on the sterling ranges i'm going to say still about 10 percent chance because it also doesn't look like there's going to be any rain moving through the area either at this time and but it doesn't look like the conditions are going to be optimal for snow formation and certainly not on any of the lower elevations around the perongrup regions ranges or anything like that 
Uh, but yeah, showers and storms expected this evening, but that is not going to be the worst of it. We're looking at a couple of dry days, maybe um, after Thursday when a couple of showers move through, but definitely Friday looks like it's going to be dry for the Perth metro area, and those winds are going to swing around up pretty freshly from the northwest, and you'll be able to notice that uh, by around lunchtime on Friday, because uh, as we get into Saturday, especially into the evening hours of Saturday, a very strong and powerful cold front starts to build itself up offshore from the coast. In fact, it is a dual frontal system. The stuff that only happens about once or twice a year, it's certainly going to be the strongest front of the year, or one of the strongest cold fronts of the year. But this one here, as it lines itself up Saturday evening and collides with the coast around 5 or 6 p.m. Saturday night, where it could bring up to 50 millimeters of rainfall in just a couple of hours. Certainly some very heavy accumulations expected. It'll also bring some very damaging wind gusts, probably up towards 100 and 110 kilometers an hour in its wake. And then Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, rather, we get the second cold front move through. And this is a very intense band of showers that will be blasting through early Sunday morning and clearing off by Sunday afternoon as this rain moves further inland in towards the central parts of Western Australia, where up to 30 millimeters is possible, which is fantastic. And then it looks like those damaging winds are going to really cool things down Sunday afternoon and evening. Um, in terms of peak rainfall accumulations, we're probably going to be looking at more over the next 10 days, at least 80 to 110 millimeters around the Perth metro area. That is a slight drop on the yesterday's forecast of 130 millimeters. But I'd also say that that's taken into account the 10 or 20 millimeters that some locations have had over the past 24 hours, which means this Sunday system alone and the rainfall that's going to come through tonight, we're looking at two systems probably going to be providing the first one at least 30 to 40 millimetres and then the second one, the Saturday and Sunday system, maybe up towards 80 millimetres for the Perth metro area and this will extend as far north as Durian Bay or up to 70 millimetres is expected there. Even Geraldton expecting a healthy 30 millimetres and Calbarri also 30 millimetres there. Inland communities such as Murchison expecting about 10 millimetres, Mekathara around 20 millimetres and even as you get further inland into the old gold mining areas around Lanista and Laverton, you're still looking at a good 10 to 15 millimetres of rainfall and yeah it, it just all around looks like a pretty healthy thing to be having on the forecast in the next um sort of day or so we're also going to be seeing some rainfall gets drawn in from the tropical north um and that could be providing areas in the pilbara and the um kimberley region up towards 10 or 15 millimeters of rainfall too and a couple of spots in the northern territory expecting a good amount of rainfall as well but we'll be watching that and we'll be talking about that in tomorrow's update but right now looking like a very good forecast for farmers in the wheat belt region and the south coastal region where up to uh, 30 or 40 millimetres is also expected there. It is all around a very healthy forecast in terms of rainfall for Western Australia. Let's talk about winds right now because winds are also a very significant threat. Uh, we'll be talking about them from uh, Friday afternoon because that's when the wind gusts are going to start to really pick up. And all through Saturday, we're going to be talking about wind gusts up towards um, 80 or 90 kilometers an hour in the exposed coastal locations around Perth and averaging about 60 or 70 kilometers an hour um, in more built up areas um, in towards Perth's east and so forth. But yeah, very strong winds are expected to develop from Saturday evening as this initial cold front comes through. And then as the pool of showers behind it comes through it really blasts up quite far north to be honest these damaging winds but it's going to take about until Sunday evening for these wind gusts to really drop off and we're talking about peak wind gusts up towards 100 kilometers an hour with the passage of the strongest of showers and probably about 100 kilometers an hour as well with the passage of the primary cold front which is going to be coming through Saturday night it is a very complex low pressure system it's a big one and it's going to be providing a lot of rainfall and some pretty nasty conditions as well now I've got to zoom out here to kind of get this scope of the waves that's going to be coming through uh, with the system um, into frame here because massive waves are basically a given at this point. They're not as big as what we were saying yesterday. I mean, yesterday we were talking about 9 to 10 metre high waves. Um, today, this morning, we're probably only going to be, going to be talking about 7 metre waves or so um, around the Perth area and around the Southwest Capes, about 6 or 7 metres high there. So still very, very high indeed. The biggest waves that we'll likely see this year, and it's going to be very interesting looking at the ocean Sunday um, afternoon and Sunday evening, but at this time it doesn't look like it is going to be a really bad or really nasty forecast where we were talking about 8 metre high waves plus, but still though it looks like it is a pretty big time uh, cold front that's coming through and it's going to be providing a lot of pretty nasty conditions and of course in its wake temperatures will plummet, we're talking about minima on Monday morning um, 
I'm getting quite close to um, low single digits of around um, 7 to 8 degrees Celsius for a lot of areas. Perth expecting a minimum of about 12 degrees, so a little bit more mild there, but also Tuesday morning expected to be pretty cold too, especially as you get further north into Western Australia, um, up into the gold fields and into the Gascoyne region, some cold minima are expected. And yeah, it's just going to be winter from now on by the looks of things. The big winter opener front has came through and it looks like it is going to be winter from now on. And unfortunately, just taking a look at this forecast here, if we haven't had enough rainfall by then, there's another big cold front coming through. I just noticed that on the winds there. By Thursday evening and into Friday, looks like a nice big cold front is coming through. Hopefully it clears up by the weekend, but at this stage, it doesn't look awfully likely. The Axis G3 also supporting a big time cold front coming through, not as big as the one coming through this weekend, um, but hopefully it does come through maybe a day or so earlier so we do get a fine weekend. That would be fantastic news. But yeah, again, a very long-winded forecast for Western Australia. If I haven't covered anything or if you've got a specific question that you'd like me to answer then please do leave it in the comment section down below that'd be much appreciated and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying this video so far we've been talking about tropical cyclones as well for the past week or so i mean it's actually getting quite close it is right now on the forecast now so we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery and you can see there's quite a bit of cloud activity here in the, this part of the southwest indian ocean i'll just get australia into frame but you can see it is a very very long way away from australia about two or three thousand nautical miles there's about five 5,000 kilometers away from the West Australian coastline, but this little cloud activity, um, as innocent as it looks, it looks like it does have a brief chance of becoming the next tropical cyclone. The GFS has been very much on board with this, um, and it looks like early next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, we do see a little tropical cyclone try and spin up as it gets towards Madagascar here, and it does a good job at holding itself together for basically about a week from Saturday, the 1st of Ju um, yeah, June, right through to Thursday, the 6th of June, I nearly said July for some reason there. But yeah, that is something very interesting to be having on the forecast. Not unusual, but it is a bit unusual for this time of the year. But for this part of the Southwest Indian Ocean, when you're talking about seven or eight degrees south, which is very close to the equator. It is an awfully unusual and it is just an interesting thing to be having on the forecast as well. And also while we're on the topic of tropical cyclones, well in this case it is a typhoon, but up in the Philippine Sea here we've got this developing, or oh, strengthening typhoon Eronair, which is blasting past the Philippines at this time. It was a strengthening system yesterday, but it encountered some high levels of wind shear which tore itself apart, um, and as such it did weaken off quite dramatically, but it looks like it's back on the intensification train it did really well at least initially to get out a um, eye it looked like a powerful typhoon was in the making but thankfully something stopped it it was the wind shear and it now has to completely rebuild rebuild itself from the ground up but it is a minuscule system and if I was to zoom out to and capture Australia in the image as well you can just see that this system is actually quite hard to spot you'd be forgiven for missing it on the satellite map but we do have a typhoon up towards the north it's not a strong one and that's also the one that we've been talking about since I believe April 10th that was the first time I mentioned it in a video. No, April 20th was the first time I mentioned it in a video on this channel. So it's taken itself a full month and oh, eight days or something to form. A very long time to develop. Really starting to waffle on here. So I do thank you for your company this morning. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and their support is greatly appreciated. I could not run this show without them. Uh, they are the reason I have access to all this beautiful software that I can make these exquisite videos with so thank you so much for watching the video to this point your support is greatly appreciated and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye